Welcome to another briefly, we thought, episode of the Strange Motion Way podcast. I'm your host, Tim Strange. Briefly? I'm Carrie Strange. Yeah, we did uh, a while ago, we did an uh, event recap from the good guys Des Moines and Columbus events as we were driving home and got a really good response. So we're bringing you some recaps from the Custom Kemp's Lead Sled Spectacular, NSRA Street Rod Nationals, Roadkill Nights Drag Race at Woodward Avenue, and the Tri-5 Nationals. So we talk about what happened, how the events run, and the coolness of all of them. So here we go. But first, a word from our sponsors. Hey, welders, ready to upgrade your gear and save some serious dough in the process? The Miller Build with Blue Savings and Rebate Program has you covered. Find amazing deals and cashback rebates on a wide range of Miller products, from welders to plasma cutters and everything in between, all backed by our three-year warranty. Don't let this opportunity pass you by. Take advantage of the Miller Build with Blue program now. Visit us online or stop by your nearest Miller distributor today to start saving. Welcome to another episode of the Strange Motion Way podcast. Is this actually a podcast or just going on YouTube? This is a podcast. Okay. But look at me over here, not this way, because they don't want to see the side of your face. Oh, okay. <laughs> so we did this uh, driving home from Good Guys Columbus, and we had a lot of good response on it about filling people in that couldn't go to the event. Um, so we've had a busy last few weeks in a row with some events that um, started out as the Custom Camps of America Lead Sled Spectacular in Salina, Kansas. We were both scheduled to go to that. Unfortunately, our best buddy Turbo had to go to the vet, and Carrie had to stay home and give him UTI meds, and now we have a diabetic cat that has to have pills every day. So luckily, we have a girl that comes to the house if we can't both be home and helps us out. So yeah. that's our life. Our little best friend Turbo has to have a pill every day for the rest of his life. So right now, we're trying the pills. It don't have to do shots. So he takes them like a champ because we bribe him with treats afterwards. Which the vet good. says that's okay. So he's doing pretty good. He's bouncing back a little bit. He's good in bad days. But it'll it'll get better, we hope. So <clears throat> so you stayed home from I Salina. Did. I did. I was bummed. <laughs> um, I, I love to go to Salina. It's always hot. But um, we discovered last year that there's a water park within walking distance. So it's like moved up. It's always been a good show for me, but because of the heat, it sometimes comes down. But now with the water park, it's up here because it's a water park I actually get to go to. Um, and then there's a super awesome hotel that is two blocks away and I can stay at the hotel, sleep in, walk to the show when I'm not working. And if I get hot, I can walk back. So it's great. The yep. Town is awesome. It I was love... hot, but there was a little breeze. It wasn't the hottest year that I've ever been there, but it was over 100 every day. So. Yeah, but <clears throat> I love their downtown. I normally take one day and just walk the downtown area and go in the shops and, and check everything out there. It's like <coughs> super cool downtown. So if you have not done that event, you definitely need to put it on your calendar. If for nothing else, the downtown, the food, and the museum. But yeah, the Garage Museum. And this this event, Custom Campus America, the Lead Sled Show, it's their big one. Um, it's like no other event, no other town that you will ever go to in any show circuit. One, Thursday night, they line up and do a parade mm -hmm. free for the city people. Yep. They do it because the city is so supporting and the museum is so supporting and the town is just so welcoming to the KKOA show. Yep, they have a grand a, marshal, and they get about, I don't know, 50, 70 cars in the parade? Oh, I bet there was 150 to 200 cars this year. It really? was ridiculous. It lasted yeah, guess, a while. Yeah, it it lasted last, a while. Uh, we were at dinner <clears throat> two years ago, so we missed the beginning part of it. Yeah, so, so there's, there's a lot. Some organizations probably think we're not going to do a parade. One, because they're in a little bit bigger towns. You couldn't do this in Louisville or Columbus or... Some of these bigger towns, just because it would just be too hard with the amount Traffic of people jam. that are in it. Yeah. I mean, Salina is a pretty good sized town, but it's not the size of a Louisville or an Indianapolis or something like that. But then again, some people might think if they bring this car show to town, 
if you have a free parade, that's going to cut off your spectator gate. But the KKOA looks at it as they're supporting the town and opening eyes to the next younger generation of custom and car people. And the spectators are still good. Um, it gives everybody a little bit of a, a of a feel of what, what's to come for the weekend. Yeah. So it kind of yeah. gets them excited. And then they <laughs> see something and they're like, oh, I want to go check it out. I want to see what else is there. So it kind of gives them like a little bit. Of, and there's a lot of city people that come out and do the parade and probably don't do a car show. Yeah. But, you know, the local radio station was doing a live remote. It, it's very cool. I got invited. One finally, one finally, one good thing about being friends with Chris Ryan. <laughs> finally, one thing. Uh, he probably won't listen to this, but Chris Ryan has been a guest. He's a good friend of mine. Uh, both of us in their Custom Camps of America Hall of Fame. I got in last year, and he's had his car, multiple vehicles in the Garage Museum in Slida, Kansas. The Garage Museum is incredible. If you get on social media on my Rod Builder Instagram and my Facebook, I put a bunch of pictures and videos of the Garage Museum. We went over there one afternoon and Chris is actually on the board of directors there to try to get customs. They have a whole Custom Camps of America wing at this Garage Museum. And all you custom people, listen, they are always needing cars because they rotate out every six to 12 months and they need some good customs. So you can take your car, people will see it. You can leave it there for a year. They like to rotate no longer than a year, leave your customs there. So any of you custom people want to take your car to Slide of Kansas, I highly recommend it. The museum is incredible. So <clears throat> Chris got invited to the VIP, the donors party for the kickoff of the parade. Chris is on the board. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I was Chris's plus one. Aww, I was I was his date for the night. Cute. So yeah, whatever. Yeah. I could say we're trying to keep it <laughs> clean. I was Chris's keep plus going. one for the week, for the night. And <clears throat> we walk in and it's the hotel that Carrie was talking about is right on the corner. My arm's here. And there's a suite room up at the top that goes around the corner. And there's a patio that wraps around the corner. So you see the cars staging up and coming and going down the main drag from this. And they had snacks and they had a presentation because, uh, oh, what's his name? I got his card over there. Morris. He's about had a bunch of cars in Rodder's Journal. Local Salina hot rod collector. Uh, he donated a car to the Garage Museum. Most of the cars are on loan there, but he donated a car that night, a 57, I think it was 57 T-Bird. It's got, had 12, or 12 issues of Hot Rod Magazine back in like the 60s. Raced, raced, I think it raced U.S. Nationals. It's raced at Bonneville. Very cool history of this car. And he gave it to the museum that night at this VIP party for the Garage Museum. So that was really sure. cool. And I walk in there. Jeff Bro was there. Um I finally learned how to say his name right at the Good Guy Show. Uh, B-R-A-U-L-T. His name is Bro. It's like French. He's from Wichita. He came up. He's one of the supporters of the museum. But you might, might know that name is Devlin Rod and Customs out of Wichita. Built his Chevy Roadster a few years ago that won America's Most Beautiful Roadster. Then it went on to Good Guys and win Street Rod of the Year. So he was there. Uh, big car collection guy. Did they have hors d'oeuvres? They did. They had little pizzas, little... There was, was it, fancy stuff. Oh, that's so, what I was going to say. Yeah. Stuff you would eat, or did you have to go eat dinner afterwards? We did go to dinner afterwards. It's You go to those, you just snack. You know, you don't like, oh my God, it's a buffet, because it's just not that type of thing. You might, but yeah. I would. Like, yeah. Free dinner! You're supposed to act like you've been to one of these places before. It's like, there was no tacos. Is so. that why I don't get invited back? Maybe. Yeah. So that that's the, the Thursday night kickoff. And then the show is Friday, and then Friday night is so what, what the cool thing they do is all the past custom camps for america hall of fame inductees that are at the event that weekend get to pick a car on thursday and friday and then during they have like a banquet type of thing there's not food and stuff so it's like what do you call it if it's not a banquet there's no food awards presentation. yeah it's awards presentation award ceremony yeah. award ceremony and uh so all the Past Hall of Fame guys, most of them build a trophy. I built a really cool trophy. I spent way too much time working on a couple hours here and there every night. Probably had 40 hours in it. Had, you know, shaped it on the English wheel. Carrie said it looked like a, a racing turtle. I uh, had some shape to it and different things that I wheeled and planished hammer and English wheeled and made a base and stainless hardware and graphics and cut and rubbed it, made a brass molding and had the trophy guy burn me my logo and 
what the award was and the KKOA logo and put it on there. So it was pretty, pretty cool. It was very heavy. I have next year's planned already that I'm kind of like going to do a, a series of the same shape of a thing. Well, we're going to not put 40 hours into it because if we put that on the clock, yeah, that was a very expensive trophy. I did it at night, Carrie. I know, but still, you could be home with me and the kitties at night in the pool. Still going to build a nice trophy because you want, if you're given a Hall of Fame award, you... I didn't say you wouldn't have to do a nice yeah. trophy. <laughs> you didn't offer to come help, so... Uh, no. Anyway, so I picked... Um, sh oh, shit. I should have wrote his name down. Uh, Don't pass, please. Davis was our last name. Greg Davis. And his wife, uh, car's been built many, many years, but I always love this thing. It's a 50 Buick. It's cut. It's, I think it's sectioned. It's got a 67 Impala roof on it and then made fastback. Uh, it's got hidden wipers on it. It's so for the record though, you did send me, you narrowed it down Yeah. and you sent me the pictures. So yeah. I, at least whether he li was going to listen to me or not, I at yeah. least got some input into the pick. So, I mean, I love Chris Ryan's Continental, and he's like, no, I'm not taking your award. Even though he gave me his award last year for the Chevelle, because he liked the story of me and my dad. But So he's like, give it to somebody else. Well, so I did. I mean, that was one of my cars that I had picked. Yeah, anyway. we had, I think we had three, 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 three or, or four, four yeah. that you had sent me and <laughs> kind of hashed it out. So yeah. that Friday night yeah. program, I actually got invited to help Jerry Titus on the microphone, which was a big honor. Uh, Jerry always does this kind of tonight show. We didn't really do the tonight show this year. Devonna, his wife, that's really in charge of us all there. She says, let's keep it short and sweet. So then people could go downtown and do other things. And I mean, it's still, I think we we're still there an hour and 45 minutes or something like that. So all the Hall of Famers, we do a quick little interview with them. And then we inducted two new Hall of Famers, um, David Walk from Kansas, uh, very deserving, and Dan cellular is spelled really weird he was actually not there um he's one of these guys from the west coast that drives his cars he drives them all the way to kevin anderson's show he usually comes to salina so he drives all the way to indianapolis and stuff just a road dog with his customs and very very good uh couple to induct so that was pretty cool that night john jackson tried to send me some video I still want the one video. I don't know how long it was. It's still loading in my phone. Yeah. And John, so, not stock John, photography. He yeah. was, he was there for a day and a half, a couple days hanging out with me, Chris Ryan. And he, he has another great YouTube channel and he put a video up. That's like an hour long from event coverage from the yeah. lead sled show. So get on a not stock photography YouTube page and check him out with all that. Um, so and what then, is before, okay. So before Friday night, before you, um, do the awards thing, what else is the crazy thing that happened in Salina at the show? Oh, it's the drag races that night too. Yeah. Yeah. Out at the old, it run used to be an old brung. area. Yeah. It's run with your brung. Run wrong with your brung. Run with your brung drag city. They call it. They got their own t-shirt merch and all that stuff too. Carrie as an event insurance person, she about has a heart attack when she watches five or six runs. We, um, yeah. We no. go out every year, but we stay for about, 10, but it's a short minutes. it's a short run it's now they've developed that area out there there's soccer fields and baseball parks and all that stuff um but there's still a big stretch of asphalt that's the asphalt's probably it's an old airfield right yeah, yeah air, it's an old air, airfield. airfield yeah um over a quarter mile long is this but they do i don't know is it maybe 400 foot launches i don't i don't really see much tech there's no helmets you can it's put people very in, safe. You, yeah, it's an arm drag, arm drop drags. It's come um, a long <laughs> way as an event person and the waiver person and the, the, I wouldn't say safety person because I'm not, I'm just like. The, well, the first year it was like orange snow fence. I'm, yeah, There's yeah. K-wall now. There's concrete K-wall down yeah. the whole run. And, and so. two years ago when we went out there, I was like, oh, okay. But the first couple times that we went out there, like many, many years ago, but like, remember the first time that they did it, we went out there and that's the first time we seen the farm truck guy yep. that was, that was before he was kind of on YouTube, That was the silver bullet racing YouTube page. If people remember that oh, was all this drag racing stuff. Um, this was probably two years before he was on, mm -hmm. uh, the street outlaw stuff. Yeah. And he, he was wearing his bib overalls. He had his dog in the truck, had the full accent. 
Yeah. Yeah. I'm talking to him. What's that? Well, you, you know, he's playing it all up. And I'm like, dude, I'm not racing. You know, you know, like, so he dropped his accent. It's like, man, it's just a big block with a whole bunch of nitrous in it. You know, it's pretty, yeah. it's pretty cool. So there's some fast, fast cars that show up, but 90% yeah. of it is, Hey, the custom guys just want to go down the thing. Or there's a guy with a Corvair that had slicks on it and motor in the front. He, you know, is written, you know, these guys bracket race some, but yeah. it's not a hardcore drag race. It's just, but it brings out the crowd. Like the crowd yeah, the that's town out there comes out is insane, and they do charge an extra admission. Like the first couple yep. of years, it was free to the town. Then so, they realized, yeah. well, that's a different revenue stream because there's probably people that just like drag racing that'll come to that and not pay well, to come out to see the car show. Pay the insurance. So. Yeah, 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 you got to yeah. pay for the insurance. So I went out there for a little bit before I went and got cleaned up and went to the Friday but night. It's super cool. If it you ever get so the opportunity, cool. yeah, like. It's a bucket list thing. It's yeah. it's super cool. It's you know, the town that comes out, backs their trucks up, and then pick up trucks and yep. hang out in the bed of the trucks. It's just another thing that it's like no other yep. event. You just need to go to Salina to take it all in sometimes. So then the big day at the show is Saturday. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> the Hall of Fame people giving their awards that night. Um, the KKOA staff runs around, does a picks, and they do a top twenty five and. Everybody thinks that the Triple Crown invented this, but you get to a piece of paper in your car that you won something. Stay for Sunday awards. Like we have a piece of paper for the Hall of Famers that we give them, and it's like, okay, here's your invite in because you kind of got to buy tickets to the the Friday night Hall of mm -hmm. Fame uh, get together. Um, so here's your ticket in. You're going to get an award from unless unless you personally hand it to the person with your car. You don't know who you're getting your Hall of, the Hall of Fame picks to, right. from. So then, same thing, if you get one of the, the awards, top 25, or, you know, they give the triple seven, America's Top Custom is the big award, mm -hmm. um, which I still think it comes with a thousand bucks. We won that back with the Hanson Buick years ago, and yep. Chris has won it. The cool thing, when we went to the, the Garage Museum, it's got a, a revolving trophy, like AMBR and Custom Delegance at the big indoor shows in the Riddler, that they got this cool triple seven award. And it's on display in the KKOA wing of the Garage Museum. And every year, you, they put the plaque on it of who won that year, the owner and the builders on there. So it was pretty cool. Been a while since I'd seen that trophy. I think it was 2007, 2008 when we won that with the Hanson Resilience Buick. So that yeah. that was pretty cool seeing, you know, another friend's names on that on that trophy. But uh, so we had you know, never been to the museum until you went this year. Yeah. yeah. We didn't realize... <laughs> Like last year, I walked up and down the city downtown area and didn't realize a block over it was a is block yeah. over. The museum's so literally five blocks year. from the car show. Yeah. It's, it's really we, we did window peek and we did go and look around and, and look through the windows, but I have never been there. Yeah, so. it's it's really neat. They have a lot of automated stuff where kids can come in and schools can come in and learn uh, welding and painting. It's all computers, so it's all VR. With I, I ran the hell out of it when I was painting. Me and Chris was running oh, the fender. Yes. Hell, Gary. I know. Yeah. Okay. okay. So anyway. Okay. Back to Saturday. Sorry. So you get this piece of paper, stay for the Sunday awards, which they do them at like noon, one o'clock, so people can get on the road. So then as they're doing the awards ceremony, again, they've been doing this for 40 some years or whatever. They've been running this show. You don't know what you're getting until the award comes out. You know, good guys is like, oh, you're winning Mm -hmm. McGuire's Magnificent, whatever, or you're a top five finalist for whatever. You know what you're getting before you go to the awards on Sunday. Well, this, it's, they used to pull them up, mm -hmm. but now they don't. They just have the people walk up the way the fairgrounds is. It's, people can nice sit in this stage. little amphitheater. You can't really drive the cars down. So the last handful of years, they haven't dri driven the cars up. Um, but you don't know what you're getting until you sit there and listen for your name. So it's pretty cool. The 777 guy is always surprised. And uh, a couple of years ago, uh, Kent Wittenberry was sitting there. Uh, Anthony Kent Wittenberry he goes by Kent, I think. And he won triple seven, not this year, but last year. Mm -hmm. And he was just sitting there because he knew he was getting an award because he had the piece of paper in his car. And he didn't. It's like I don't hear my name. Well, then finally the last. So it's like, well, that when we won the triple seven, we were you're all sitting in your car because they used to pull us up back then. And like, who do they follow? We'll we'll let you know who you pull up. And finally, I'm looking around. It's like, man, it's towards the end here. When do I go up? And they finally go, you come up last. You won the big one. So, I mean, they do that at the, the Triple Crown of Rotting, uh, the Gary Case and Alloway show. But they have been doing that at KKOA for all these years. Another thing people think that these other people show kind of started, uh, which they, it's great. Um, KKOA, 
on Saturday afternoon, they get all the Hall of Famers that are there and the new people, and they have a poster made with your picture. You send in your mugshot, and they have a big lineup of people mm -hmm. come, and they always have a huge turnout. The Hall of Famers sign posters and sign whatever, and sign T-shirts and babies or whatever they put in front of us. And uh, so, yeah, it's it's a it's a pretty cool thing. And, I and actually, they always have, like, celebrities there. Yeah, this um, year was Candy Clark. Yep. Um, so they always have was Debbie, special American feature. Graffiti. Yep. Um, so they, they do a lot of a lot of really cool things. One of the, the things that I like the most is they do they ha they do um a, um uh hide and seek like they hide Hot Wheels yeah. around yeah. The, the around the the fairground or around the the park and they give out hints throughout and then once you find it you can't tell anybody or you can't take it you have to go tell the DJ where you think it is and, and if then, you're the first person you win some package yeah, and then they let you know the first kid or the first teenager you see and all, all these people walking around going you know kind of like that game of the pokemon <laughs> yeah, thing yeah. but yeah i, I enjoy that yeah. that was that was fun i and have, have a lot a of huge pinup contest mm -hmm. that bethany runs on saturday i got to be a judge this year um chris ryan was supposed to be there but he kind of left early and he snuck away and went to topeka and went to the there is axel which since we've been on, he has had a first birthday party. Yes, hats and all. Yeah. And um, so he went to the Evil Knievel Museum in Topeka on his way home. Um, it's closing in fall and going to Vegas. Vegas. So more people will probably see it there, but it's absolutely you know, incredible. You've got to talk to the people. Um, so the, uh, the pinup contest, there was almost 50 ladies in this. Hey. And hey. different age groups and Dad you know talking. their dress and their costumes and their interviews it, it's it's incredible it took an hour and a half for the pinup contest to go through so it, it was it's pretty neat that they do that and then uh saturday night is kind of a wind down night even though the awards are on sunday and they always have some kind of a really good entertainment it used to be in the it's at the watson theater um there was another band booked in there like a lot of stuff comes to the watson theater and big names and musicians and comedians and all that stuff Axel didn't want to stay. He doesn't want to be part so of they had night. it at another place. And Salina yeah. is very, I like architecture and buildings. And when they had the Elvis impersonator there last night is one of them buildings built in like the forties. That's all granite and marble steps and everything. I mean, just going into that building was just incredible. And then I hung out with John Diagostino that night. And we kind of ran around after, well, that night too, before the, the Elvis show, um, oh, they have a hall of fame dinner that the, Titus is Jerry and Devana, which has been on our podcast. Take all the Hall of Famers there to this nice Italian restaurant and buy dinner for everybody. So it's really cool. All the Hall of Famers get treated like royalty when you're there. Um, it's just, it's an unbelievable time with, with what they do for the KKOA people. So, so what uh, <laughs> what won the 777 this year? Um, Fowler, uh, he's from Kentucky with a beautiful candy brandy wine, I call it like 50 mercury chopped skirted air ride uh i've seen this car it's been around a little i mean i've seen it at kevin anderson's show and the cool kind of not the cool story but how he got it he, he buys and sells cars and does paint work and he bought the car off copart it was built by oz welch a hall of famer multi-time hall of famer out of the northern california oz built it and uh um he was looking, the guy was looking on a, I might say his name, or I said Fowler, right? Fowler. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh, Jonathan Fowler. And uh, he said he was looking on Copart because that's what he does. You know, he builds wrecks and stuff and has a used car lot and he's a custom guy. He likes Cadillacs. Um, it's like, man, that's looks like an Oz Welch car. So he's like bid on it and he got it and it was hit pretty, pretty hard, pretty like quarter doors fender on one side and tweaked the thing, Trump gap some, you know, it was hit hard, hard. He's like, well, I think I can save it. I mean, it's an Oz Welch car. It's worth it, saving it. And uh, so he got it, fixed it, painted it himself. And the candy paint job on that thing is just immaculate in the shade, in the sun, whatever. So he didn't build the whole car, but he built three quarters of the car and put it back uh, the way Oz built it. And I think it's the same color. It might be a touch darker maybe than what it was. But yeah, it won the, the 777 America's Top Custom. And it was actually one of my ones that I sent you. And I'm like, I don't want to give it my pick to this Merc because there's a lot of Hall of Framers that's going to pick this thing. And they kind of want to share the love a little bit. And again, I love that. I've always loved that 50 beer. It's probably been done 
18 years, 20 years or something at Buick, and they drive the heck out of that car. And uh, so I was like, I'm not going to give that Merc because it's going to get, well, he goes to the Hall of Fame thing that night. Nobody picked it because I think everybody was kind of thinking the same thing, and he ended up winning the triple seven, so it all worked out for him. Cool. And so, they always do, um, at that show, they always do at least one, if not two, like chops. Oh, yeah. Like there's there always was, stuff going on that they're um, working on cars and, and chopping a car or something. Everett mm-hmm. Reynolds was mm-hmm. spearheading the guys. They chopped, oh, I don't remember what year it was, a 60s, late 60s uh, van, window van. Oh, wow. And chopped it. And I was like, man, Everett, man, you couldn't have done something sim- simpler. And he goes, well, look at the post. They all kind of line up. They had to do a little lean back of the windshield in the back. They had to do a little pie cutting, but it was just like, I mean, and they, they were done basically Saturday afternoon for what they were going to do. Um, I think they couldn't cut the glass, fit the windshield, didn't put it in, of course, because body work needed finish. But they do that in a pavilion. And then down, uh, which just was kind of cool, uh, Keith Dean, um, also a Hall of Famer. He was doing a 2005, 2007, an NCC, NCC, which Jerry Titus calls the New Concept Customs. Uh, The KK Way show is mostly a, what is it, 70 and older show, unless it's modified. I mean, there's some OBS trucks in there if they're dropped with roll pans and stuff and let them in. But um, So, yeah, NCC, New Concept Custom, which they actually give a $500 award for the NCC award at the KK Way. I hope to have my OBS truck will be done by then. Don't say that. Year. Don't jinx it. I know. Um, but they chopped this 05, 06, 07 Mustang and chopped it and leaned the windshield back. And, you know, some of the diehard old school custom guys was like, man, what do you do it? Then they're like, that's eh, pretty cool. Because, you know, you see enough Mercs chopped and mm-hmm. all this stuff. But for Keith, do they say, I'm going to do this later model car and you have to chop it around the side glass because of the curved glass and everything. But yeah, it was very, very cool. Two different chops going on. That's one thing. Another makes the show different than everybody else's is they always have a couple of those going on at the show. So I got up, headed home Sunday morning, get home, check on the kitty carry here with the cat. Um, but the other thing, the other cool part about that event is even if you're not a car person, they have a good swap meet. So they have a decent sized swap Great meet. Swap meet. Um, lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of cars. But even if you're not a car person, the flowers on that that ground, oh, at that park, it's incredible, is phenomenal. Like yeah. I am. What do they call the flower parks? They call them something. I'm struggling with fancy words tonight. You are. It's anyway. not just a garden, but it's yeah, it's yeah, it's, it's the 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 flowers. Like I walk around and like the park is beautiful. Yeah. So and I said it already. You can walk across the bridge and. Yeah. There's a and water they have, park. And uh, the water park was like four or five dollars yeah, to cheap. get in. And also Corey That's Conyers great. does is part of the vintage bicycle display and show that they do there. There's a model car contest. There was an unbelievable amount of model cars because the late great Eldon Titus was a big model guy, so they do that model car contest in uh yeah. in his honor. Um, I know I'm missing something else that goes on there, but yeah, yeah just it, it, great, a lot. great so, vendors. You can buy books, magazines, all kinds of stuff, new, new stuff, new stuff. Put it on your and, calendar yeah. for next year. It's always the last uh, weekend in July. And again, no, don't jinx it. Okay. Don't jinx it. Let's hold Stay, that. Okay, Let's hold no, that. No, no. We've got some secrets. Yeah. That you want to go to the show with us next year. Yeah. But anyway. All then right. So home moving on. Week. Yep. Moving on to the next weekend, which is the N A N. S R A Street Rod Street Nationals. Nationals in Louisville, Kentucky, which anybody that knows us knows that the only reason that you go to the Street Rod Nationals is so you can go go-karting on Friday night. And we used to do the Hot Rod Industry BMX Challenge. We don't do either of those anymore. I, we're old. I tapped out. I didn't do the go-karts with the guys that night. Me and Chris Ryan tapped out because we felt old. I get hired from NSRA to run around. Oh, excuse me, for like three days, and it's a four-day show. Um, man, me, Carrie's, your, Carrie's dinner's coming, coming back, back up. up. <laughs> um, to you film, were talking too fast. You were taking yeah. in too much air. Um, but the film crew, there's a film guy that they do Facebook videos, some Facebook Live, and then they actually still put together a DVD that will be available at Christmas, and they sell a bunch of these DVDs at Christmas time of the event coverage. 
So one of the cool things I got to do was go up on the roof. You've always seen pictures from Street Ride Nationals. I got to go up on the roof with the media guys and get my own pictures this year in a video. And there's 8,700 cars there. Yeah, it was down a little bit than normal. And they said only down like 150 cars. Um, a little bit of rain off and on. It always rains a day at Louisville. Um, so they didn't park in the grass as much. The low spots, they kind of come out a little bit more of the hangout spots. And swap meet's always absolutely incredible there. I actually only bought one thing in the swap meet. Good for you. Which will be a thing that I'm going to steal some ideas off for my next year's KKOA trophy. Nice. Yeah. I did not go to Street Row Nationals this year. I stayed home to take care of my little buddy. Yeah. You don't always go every year. Though. I know. I haven't actually. I haven't been going because it's always been the same weekend as the IndyCar race in Nashville. Yeah. And now that they moved that, I was like, oh, and DW. I was super excited. Like I was going to be able to see DW and the girls, and was going to go, and then didn't. So yeah, I stay with my buddy DW Horton from Welder Series in Canada, and his two daughters came this year. Uh, Lily is twenty. And Ruby is 18. Um, Lily came last year for her first time. I thought it was her second or third time. But I know it's hard to believe that I might have corrupted him just a little bit. And DW's wife let him come back and let Ruby come. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. But they came down. Uh, we got an Airbnb house someplace or close. Weren't that far from the grounds. And uh, they were driving the 32-3 window that's been together. It's the company car. It says Welder Series on the doors. And uh, DW was driving his, ah, oh man, I forget his 68, 70 Dodge mm -hmm. patina truck, hammered on Ride Tech Air Ride. And, uh, and it's, they usually park in the outdoor Ride Tech area. Well, his truck was overheating down the interstate. So he stopped halfway in like Lima, whatever you say, Ohio, and had the radiator flushed. And the girls, he goes, you go on without me. So those two girls just went the rest of the way. And Lily was one of the finalists. She didn't get to go in the awards building on Sunday for one of the safety picks because she drives the car and they thought it was cool because she's a girl and she's 20 and all that type of stuff. So that was kind of cool. She got to experience that. But yeah, the Street Rod Nationals, it's crazy. Again, it's different than any other event because like, I don't know what day it is, Tuesday, Wednesday, people come out like three o'clock in the morning, they open the gates and people run, push all this stuff that I hear these stories going on and they rope off their, their place. Well, then... All these people have already contacted local tent renting places. So, again, you look on our social media. I posted all these pictures from the roof. The tents are cursed in those tents and people grilling out and hanging out in clubs and the Blue Oval Bunch and all so these when guys. They, when they open up the whatever day that is that they open that up, they can't drive their cars in, right? No, they, they run. Get, they have to walk through the gate. Yeah, with okay. rope or okay. caution tape and so chairs. So it's like a crime scene. Yeah, okay. and it's totally like I've seen videos of uh, uh, Murphy's are always McKenzie's parents are always there. The Cincinnati mm -hmm. group. Um, there's the, most people try to get in their same Chad Adams. They always try to get in their same couple rows. And so each year, you know, when you're walking around the tents and you go see all your friends and it's really cool. But I was there on, I went up Wednesday mm -hmm. because the, in the garage media guys for builders and uh, advertisers in the, in the garage media magazines, the, all Chevy, classic truck performance, and modern rotting, they do a bowling party at the bowling alley on Wednesday night to kick off the event. So pizza and salad and stuff like that. And so we always go bowling. So DW's daughters got there to bowl. He got there right as we were finishing bowling. I think he bowled a game. So it's just cool. Wednesday night kickoff for the big four-day show. Hang out with your friends. Just visit. Sometimes I see people there and I visit that night and we go bowling and we just have a blast. And I don't see them the rest of the weekend because everybody's busy. So we have friends, a couple. Okay. Yeah. You do. I don't because yeah. I don't go. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, so go bowling. And then I, I was on the grounds that afternoon. I went in and got my media passes and all that stuff. And a windstorm came up and the doors were still open because people were still setting up in. And there was stuff by the doors. The wind came through and displays of like t-shirt stands and stuff that were blowing down. Like these people were set up, already in their hotel room, always at dinner. And they'll probably come back the next day. Like what the hell happened to my, because you wouldn't think that the wind would whip through that. It was a humongous building with a lot of vendors mm -hmm. in there. And like the building is seriously, I don't know how wide it is, but it's over a quarter mile long. I mean, it is ridiculous. The amount of room that they have this Louisville. And then I was outside 
in their 20 tenths were down flat. Again, it was set up day. It was Wednesday. Show opens on Thursday. The tent people were still out there. And they were just, they had the tents up, but they were still driving around with the truck, filling the weighted 55-gallon mm. drums with water. So the ones that didn't have water, some of them came down, but they got them all up before the show opened. And I don't think hardly any cars were in the tents that got hit. So, I mean, not that I heard. So it was pretty good. Um, so, yeah, that was Wednesday afternoon excitement. And then Thursday, I get to run around and do whatever. The film people aren't there yet. See all my vendors and uh, companies I deal women's with. Women's World. You went to Women's World. I did walk through Women's World. They have a huge woman world of arts and crafts and about anything you could think of in Women's World. And Which my favorite story about the Street Ride Nationals and Women's World was, I don't even remember how many years ago it was. It was, we were still doing the Hot Rod Industry BMX Challenge. And our niece, Tiffany, came down with us and, or came down with me. I came down, you went down earlier. I came down later. She came down with me and she was going to help us with running the hot rod industry BMX race on that Saturday night. So she's there. And I told her for helping me, I would either pay her by taking her to the six flags, which is in the oh, yeah. adjacent parking Amusement lot park right there too. Um, my God, I, she had to have been like 15. I think it was like 15. I don't think she was driving yet. So I told her I would either pay her by taking her to the six flags or we, we had gone through Woman's World, and she found a purse that she wanted. Now, it wasn't an average purse. It wasn't like $20, $25. It was 100 But it wasn't a coach purse. No, either, no, no. So. I was like, but still, it's in Woman's World. And I asked her, I'm like, well, she really wanted this purse. And I said, what do you want? Like, which one do you want? Because you're not getting both. And she picked the purse. That's when I realized she was growing up. Yeah. And she wasn't. I was like, let's go to the amusement park. Tiffany's getting older, yeah. but they also had an escalator. She could ride the escalator. So I think yeah. she did ride the escalator a lot, most yeah. of the day. Cause yeah. yeah, that's her favorite thing. But that's one of my memories about. Yeah. So Street the women's world is always big. And then out in the lobby, they have a builder showcase. They had 30, mm -hmm. 40 builders that they invite um, to display their new fresh cars out there. And it's good because it's air conditioned. If the weather's bad, you're not going to get wet. And then the last handful of years, they have done a um, elite builder award that is peer voted. Um, Eric Pratt's won it. He wasn't there, but the car won it. Um, Roger Berman. Roger Berman won it. Um, Goldman's won it. This year, um, uh, Revision Rods won it with a car that them and Berman did together, and they finished it, the Henry J. Truck thing, they call it. Henry Jenner. Get it? It's the play on words because it's Got not where it. it was born. It's Got funny. it. Yeah. But no, that, that's my favorite place to be if we have to take a car there is in the Builder Showcase. Or in a, showcase or in a vendor area. booth because yeah, then you're just in the air conditioning because it's always hot and the air hot. conditioning is great. And when you're dealing, I, although I did drive the Corvair there one year and it wasn't bad. Coming, like the traffic wasn't bad. Yeah, and you Coming parked in, in the Ride Tech booth. I parked outside. in the Ride Tech booth. It was great. Um, and then you had wheels to go drive around in, um, but being inside, the bad part about being inside is you're there until the end on Sunday, but they do give the awards out early on Sunday. Yeah, I think so, by 1230, all those people were out loading up by yeah, Sunday. So that's not too bad. So, um, so but the other great part about Louisville. Ice cream. The ice cream. Four o'clock ice cream almost Their every ice day. ice cream. And they actually, same ice cream people, we were um, at our Louisville stop on Power Tour. It's great. So good. Yeah. So yeah. good. So that, that's what kind of goes on there. And on Friday, there's pros pick. You got to pull into an area outside. Mm -hmm. um, in the last year, since they started doing that award for the Builder Showcase in, like sometimes you'll have somebody with a fresh car in the Builder Showcase. Then the next year, it'll be outside and they'll do the pros pick. Um, still great cars. Uh, they have a bunch of vendor or media people and car builders. I've been on that team for a while. You walk around and pick your top 10 and you give them and then they add up the 10 and that's that's what gets the pros pick still a very big honor uh big deal to win a pros pick the street ride nationals again there was 8700 cars and change there this year this was the first year they didn't do a giveaway car they've been doing a giveaway car for years mm -hmm. um some people thought that would really hurt attendance uh, it didn't because they gave away twenty thousand dollars in cash over the weekend or twenty thousand dollars somehow um a different $5,000 things. Then I think there was 
they didn't give, I don't know, but they gave away a lot of money, mm -hmm. at least 20, if not more money. But people probably want the money anyway. The car is fine and oh. dandy. But I still take a car and use it for well, a while and sell it. But then you sell it, yeah. so you might as well just yeah. give them the money. Yeah. Yeah. And then there's more people that could win a little bit instead of one person winning a car, you yeah. know, sharing the money. What so, other areas? Um, um, they have the young, the under 30? The 29 and below, sponsored yep. by Vinnie Jair. Well, this year, um, used to be Classic Instruments did the, the pro spec area. This mm -hmm. year was Lumicraft, took that all over. So that was pretty cool. Dan hmm. heard it was available Sorry. and he jumped at it. So that's a good... Uh, Sponsor to have part of there. And then um, the Vinnie Jair under 29 on Saturday. That's We go out and do a live remote there. That's my favorite. It's the biggest group that they get. They have this parking lot that, oh, they'll do truck parking one day and they do Mopar and they'll split it. But the amount of people that come for that, and it's so cool to see them from year to year. The one guy had a Mustang. Now he's drag racing it, a stick shift thing around the Midwest. And this girl with the Nova wagon, she had a patina car. She tricked me. She goes, you definitely want to interview me because look what I've done. It's all painted and everything now. And I was like, yes. So we kind of warn them that we're going to come because it's a Facebook live thing. And, uh, and so we interviewed Dan Baker and then, or no, that we interviewed that day. We interviewed to go back. We do a live remote too, from the pros pick with the builders and owners and started with Dan Baker. And then we do a live thing. So started with Rick love for the Saturday 29 and below. And, this girl tricked me. And I was like, look at all the work you've done. She goes, it's a whole different car. <laughs> I would have thought you would have figured that well, out. Well, I was own. like, well, no, it was a first gen Nova four door wagon, but this one was painted and her dad was behind the you know, snickering and laughing. Um, this one kid, he, he's great to talk to. I've talked to him the last two years. He's the one running this like 69, 70 fastback Mustang and manual shift and stick shift car. And it's got like center lines or it's not a high dollar car, but he's improved it every year. He's improved it. And I always tell him, and nobody else thought it. When he smiles, he looked like he could be the stunt double for Zac Efron. But he's a lot taller than Zac Efron. He, like, and his girlfriend's like, don't tell him that. There's no way. <laughs> and I'm like, it's kind of like when they say it's the wish version. That's what I tell them. All these kids have such a great sense of humor out there. And again, it's my favorite group to go out there and talk to the the young. I mean, we used to park in those areas when mm -hmm. we were younger. And we met people. Oh, the good old days. We met people back then that we still know and associate with. And. Carrie said we don't have any friends, but that's why we're sitting here in our, our dining room talking to a computer <laughs> on a Monday night. Um, but yeah, what else goes on there? They So they on Sunday... The, they have the Women's World. They have a huge vendor. Indoor. A huge indoor yeah. vendor area. They have on Friday, they have the Pros Pick. On Saturday, they have the Young... Um, 29 under, and Below. 29 and Below. They have a, a massive swap meet. They have autocross. A lot of oh, people yeah. don't know yeah, that it's there's the back, autocross so going yeah. on there. It's like its own little thing. They don't do it on Sunday. Mile. Yep. And it's people mm -hmm. come because, you know, normal autocross, then they give ride-alongs to people too. Mm -hmm. So it, it's pretty cool. You can go and, yeah, I think you buy a, a ticket that goes to charity or something. Do they still have a band? Mm. They always used to always have a big band. Yeah. yeah. Um, back in the day, the, the place to be before they started putting cars in the building was on that circle. Remember, we'd get there so early and be by the waterfall, by the circle. Mm -hmm. Well, just off from that waterfall circle, they have a tent, and there's bands in there. Like Friday and Saturday, I think there's five or six different bands. We were still walking around at 7 o'clock one night, and there was still a band playing out there. A lot of people don't stay that late, or they don't pay attention. But a lot of good local bands, like all types of different rock and roll, country, everything. A lot great entertainment. So what else do they have going on at the um, um, Scooter Nationals? There is a lot of scooters. Uh, I think it was Al Lieberman posted a picture of the scooter lockup uh, building. Um, but I remember several years ago. It's ridiculous how big this event is. It's the building in it's the middle. Huge. And then, and now, you know, I am not bashing scooters. Let me tell you, I've been on one all summer long. Yeah. And if you need it, that's great. Use it. Because God forbid, I, I wouldn't have been able to go to Des Moines and Columbus had I not had one. Mm -hmm. But I do remember when they had the pros pick back out in the back where they do autocross now. Um, you were out there filming, and I got a picture of the scooter gangs. Yeah. And, yeah, it's it's yeah. pretty comical. Yeah. But, hey, if you that's need the, it, use That's it. the I, real guy making money at all these NSRA good guys. Yep. All, is the scooter rental guy is killing it. Yeah. He is killing it. Yep. And, uh, yeah. Um, so, and then Sunday, um, the award winners pull in to, I believe it's Broadband Arena. And they give away a whole bunch of prizes. You must be present to win. A um, bunch, a lot of their sponsors give stuff, and they give the, all the awards out. And uh, I filmed in there a little bit, and then I got on the road and headed home. 
So it was yeah. a great, great event. Um, had fun with DW and his daughters, um, hanging out. Um, Chris Ryan was there. Uh, and if hung out anybody dinner with is, the Ride Tech guys one night. If anybody is watching this that allegedly <laughs> might have mistakenly taken the chairs out of the QA1 booth, you can just bring them back and no questions Somebody will stole, be asked. Somebody stole the yes. like director's chairs. The director's chairs got nice. stolen out of the QA1 booth. Nice. Um, so, you know, that sucks. Come on, people. Yeah. We're better than that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, just bring them back. Um, they'll be at uh, Pleasanton this weekend. Next week. Yeah, this weekend. And they'll be at um, LS Fest uh, in two weeks. So just bring them back and there'll be no questions asked. Okay? Yeah. Perfect. Because they actually was Rick's personal chairs. So that sucks. Nice. Yeah. yeah. But anyway. So then I leave and take Rick from QA1 because mm -hmm. your company that you work for, FM3, runs the Optima and QA1 rigs programs. Mm -hmm. So I took him at you in uh, it's a lot of stuff that people don't know when you leave an event. I took Rick from the QA1 setup to you in Bowling Green and helped you guys move a trailer. I left mm -hmm. my truck for you. And for a day and a half, you guys switched stuff from your storage building to different trailers to get ready to leave. And then I went home and you came home Monday. Yep. Um, yep. To go because we were gone together the next weekend. Well, we were gone separate. You went one way, I went the other. Yeah, together yeah. at the same like time. Yeah. Normal situation. Thankfully, we had uh, the wonderful vet assistant girl that comes take out. Take care of our turbo. Take care of turbo. So because he does be... not want to go to a kennel to no. be boarded. He would so not. Be on. So I flew out on Tuesday um, and headed out to. So I know you time. you don't like to give too much information about the events that you put on, um, but I think there's some of this. this it's the Roadkill Drag Race. I went and helped mm -hmm. the first year. It used to be the same weekend as Woodward. So tell everybody a little bit about that. You, you allegedly all the how many years have you done this? Five, six years, seven, eight, eight years. Mopar's involved, and they really they block off Woodward Avenue in the town of Pontiac. We have done that for. Seven, yeah. eight years. Allegedly, this was the plan to run it. I mean, it's incredible. With the first year, it was like a 24 hour permit. What was it the last few years? Like 48, 52? Yeah, it's the same. We shut down the road on Friday night at like nine o'clock. Haul in K Wall, trucking and companies, it has fencing. To be back open at nine o'clock on, or by, I, I think six, I don't know. But you Real early you, Sunday you, morning. You treat it. It's not a no prep race. You treat it, it's sticky. Super fast, like cars that win drag week and they'll unlimited class come. Um, sick fish guy, or it's not a sick fish, six, sec six seconds. Six. There was a, there was a sick guy, the, the sick fish that's a different race car. Mm -hmm. Um, but super you know, twin turbo, I mean, cars that run six second quarter miles on drag on hot rod drag week come to this, and it's ridiculous. And then a lot of other stuff. How many cars do you limit it? Is it 300? Oh, 100 cars. Mm -hmm. I was thinking it was 300. The first year we didn't, the year you were there, it was like. Free for all, I feel like. But we what, did the car show and that, and when, it was a couple hundred cars, and it was. But it when was you a go lot. and you help the logistics of putting on any show, I mean, just thinking about at a good guy's show, you got to order the fencing and the K wall for the autocross. You got to get the golf carts Port for bodies. the media and the staff, People the porta potty, pee. all that stuff. Somebody has to do. It's a lot, a lot of work to put these events on. But this is the biggest logistics nightmare that I have ever seen because of you have a certain long, then you have to get everything out. Scrape the road, restripe the road before it's open for traffic again. I so mean, it, it's, it's really, really incredible. Like to put on an event at a venue <laughs> is a lot of work, and there's a lot of fires that people don't see. Just think about putting on an event where there's no structure. Like you're going to go out in the middle of a city, you know, like think about. The, People can like, walk down the railroad tracks and just come in. In Las Vegas, yeah. when everything was going on with the 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 race, the Formula One Formula race, One race yeah. thank you. Everybody wanted to complain, every, but nobody has a clue what all those hurdles that those people had to jump through with the city and the casinos and the 9 million thousand people that have their hands in the pot. Um, I mean, this isn't as big as the Formula One race, but... No, but it's like, it's crazy. Like, yeah. you've got to deal with so much stuff. And then like, again, and then you, you don't want to say too much. Yeah, but, I'm not going to go down the, um, no paths, but then you have political crap that gets involved. And it's just... 
So, needless to say, you didn't get to run for the first time ever in history. The Woodward Drag Race did not happen on Woodward. No, we took it inside M1 Concourse for the first time. You know, did Which is a very neat place. The year exciting. I was there, it was really pretty fresh and new. They were still building. M1 Concourse has a road course in there, and it's like, I don't know what you even call it. Like, Atlanta Motorsports Park is there where people can rent almost like little apartments, but you're not supposed to live there. Right. Put your cars, Rogers. and then there's hangout man caves type stuff that you have your race cars and stuff in there. And it's really neat. And a lot of the drag race guys that are super fast have pit spots there. The doesn't, what's his name have the, the, the six but seconds guy, but they're se they're separate. So there is M1 concourse and then there's the M1 concourse garage owners association. Oh, okay. Okay. Yep. Yeah. But so you ran it in there, which a lot of your logistics is there already, but you had to run it on the straightaway of that road course. Yeah. And you said, everybody, Love a lot of people were mad that, oh, you know, it's the mystique of, you've seen a lot of online complaining people, kind of like well, we do the hot power tour people. It's like, there was not a lot of refunds that were done. We all, they did, they didn't advertise they would do refunds, but if people complained and emailed in, they did refund them their money because it was a change from what they signed up as, but there wasn't a lot. And that was like tech on Friday night. The guys weren't complaining. Racers want to race. Racers want to yeah, race. Yeah. Um, yeah, had it been a perfect world, um, every, you know, it wouldn't have been a last minute change. We all would have liked that 10 times better. I can't imagine and the amount of work, the amount of work that we all and Mike Morrison put in like Mike, I don't know how that man didn't die that I don't week, know how he had a heart, but have a heart it would have been so much easier just to do it there from the beginning. Had everybody played. So without ball. saying too much, you were already in Detroit when you got the word, we got to move it to M1, inside the gates of M1 concourse. We stood around. We had a lot of workers standing around for over 24 hours. Yeah. Waiting for waiting for the decision for to come. Craziness. Yeah. Craziness. But, but you anyway. pulled it off and you yep. said everybody said, man, the traction was good. It was super and cool. Matt Hagen was there, did a burnout in the funny car. And did you yeah. have another big, you had a dragster. You had the uh, Swedish yeah, girl, the didn't Swedish, you? Yeah. Uh, what's her name? Ida. Ida. Ida? Yeah. Um, Ida or Ida. Yep. Yeah, it's spelled like Rob yep. Ida. But she, did a, but she just debuted this weekend, her first mm -hmm. U.S. What is she? She's a Australian... Is she an Australian top field champion or was she alcohol champion? I don't know. She's a dragster champion from Australia. Yeah. And now she's running the last eight races here in America yep. and made juniors. it to the semifinals yesterday in uh, wherever they were. I don't know where they were racing. Um, Brainerd? Brainerd. Yeah. yeah. Um, two juniors ran junior dragsters. Those were super The junior cool funny videos. car thing. I think yep. those are the funny those cars are, are so cool. cool. Um, I got to hang out with their little sister and their mom and their grandma. Um, for a little bit, but yeah, that was super cool. Uh, the racing was phenomenal. Um, you know, it, it was fast. It was, it was a neat opportunity. Is that surface fact, asphalt or concrete? It is asphalt. Okay. Um, <laughs> it was super cool because we got to have open pits. You know, that was, that was always like the I, big problem. I did read that on At, there that people could get more. The fans loved it more because they could get right up and talk to it before right. they were kind of down the road and you couldn't really. Yeah, they didn't even get to see them like they didn't see the cars before until they actually came down the strip because the drag strip was here, here, and their pits were down here, which nobody had access to. Um, and that was part of the, the requirement um, for getting the permit was limited access, limited amount of people on Woodward Avenue. So it was cool for the, the participant or the spectators to be able to get up close and personal um, see the cars, talk to the drivers. Um, everybody really seemed to like that. They liked the layout. They liked, you know, they got to see more of the cars, not just when they were going down the down the drag strip. So that was super cool. Um, and me on the outside, it'll be interesting to see if it happens again next year. But if you know, hey, we're going to run under day more in Concourse, it would sure help logistics setting up because you know what you're doing when you get to town. Yeah. Yep. 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 So yeah, Dodge Thrill Rides were there. Um, they had an off-road area set up over um, as people came through the gates. So there's a huge vendor midway. Um, a lot of really cool stuff. Um, and it all happens within 20. It's a one day event Friday. Um, there's a pre event. Um, we do our tech on Friday and then um, it's a Saturday event. We tear down and go home on Sunday. But if people are paying attention. It's a one day event that happens on a Saturday, mm -hmm. but you're there from Tuesday setting mm -hmm. up the event for a one day event. That's how much stuff that it takes to put this stuff together. Yeah, it's crazy. So then you were home Sunday. Yep. Flew home At the same Sunday time, night. I was in Bowling Green, Kentucky for one of my, another one of my, 
three amazing events back to back to me. I wish they wouldn't, but they're they're always that way. Um, the ninth Tri Five Nationals, but on uh, CPP, the presenting sponsor, and Woody's Hot Rods, and Chris Sandals and his crew run the American Tri Five Association. So I've been the MC microphone guy there for every year they've done it. They didn't do it the COVID year, so but the, so it's the ninth time that we've done this. It's unbelievable. Um, even Chris he says, like, man, originally we we're going to do this for three years, and now next year will be the tenth time, and it just stays. Just shy. I mean, there was twenty seven hundred some cars this year of Tri Five Chevys only. You can bring trucks, you can bring Corvettes, fifty five, fifty six, fifty seven Chevys only. We had a 56 Oldsmobile that snuck through and they didn't make him leave because he was with his buddies. Saturday, he was parked right outside the gate and they didn't let him in. It's like somebody just snuck in. kind of like those LS festers that... That don't understand this guy. It's got to be an LS motor? Yeah. 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 But anyway... They leave their hood closed. So... They don't think we're smart enough to figure it out. Yeah. Okay. So the Tri-5 <laughs> show, it's great. Vendors were up. Swap meet was up. I think spectators were up. I never hear spectator numbers. They tell the car registration. They've been, they've never hit 3,000. We've been a little bit bigger, but I mean, man, a three-year car of Chevy only, and you get 2,700 Tri-5s, and every Tri-5 imaginable. Um, it's really cool. Uh, I'm pulled 150 directions. I hardly took any pictures. I picked the best hot rod. I make a trophy. Um, with a quick change cover, make that and give that away. And again, uh, you send me, you know, yeah, I have four, four, four or five cars. Send them to me. And so then it's, it I, doesn't have to be a pretty show car. I try to share the love. I don't want something that's going to be a top 25 or a car of the year. I have gave, gave it to one before to It's been a top 25, but uh, it's more about the stance, the wheel and tire fitment, sidewalls. It's got to say hot rod. So I picked Kenny and Angela Davis. Uh, good, unfortunately, good friends of ours. But unfortunately, I, not, I mean, I, I didn't want to show favoritism. First, Carrie was like, "You can't give it to Kenny." Well, and here's the deal: so you sent me these pictures of these cars, and then I, uh, I got some in my eye. I respond back with my first and my second. Uh huh. They weren't in my first and second. No, because you knew whose car it was, and you're like, you can't really give it to Kenny. He's and your buddy. He's so he texted you. Yeah. Don't um don't cock block me. <laughs> yeah. Well, I can't say L. hell, but you can say that. <laughs> yeah. To um, the end. It's but then I, I walk, you know, as I'm doing award, I'm helping with the awards and doing announcements and announcing the feature cars twice a day. For, it's a Friday, Saturday only show. Um actually Thursday, Friday, Saturday, right? Oh yeah, it is Thursday. Thursday. Yeah, we yeah. do a Thursday night thing. Which was crazy. So then because I end up picking you Kenny. Text me on Thursday. I was actually leaving the venue, which never happens. I never leave before you. And we're just getting ready to start racing. And you guys racing. were just starting yeah. to race. And I was like, But Thursday, Sorry, people see you. come. Good night. Vendors are there. Again, they get amazing a group of vendors because it's the weekend after the Street Ride Nationals. So a lot of the truck and trailer programs, they leave Louisville. They leave it, leave their rigs, and then they fly in back or go home for a couple of days and come back. So that's why it's back to back because, one, Bowling Green has a lot of events. That weekend's theirs. And... Huge vendors, huge amount of vendors for Tri-5. It's ridiculous. And uh, so, yeah, so Thursday night is the only night we stay there late. It's a bracket race. It's, this year was no money to win. You got a plaque, $50 buy-in. If you lose one or two rounds, you can do a $25 back buy-in. Everything that night and the 50-50 goes to the local Humane Society. Wait. So we're animal people. Racers race for they just for wanna, free they did some of them weren't happy some a couple guys like, i ain't racing but we had wow. 44 45 cars for a bracket race that started at like seven o'clock at night and ran they had a band uh, that played for two hours over in the amphitheater for thursday night stay out there now where is that is it the one that's out in the spectator parking yeah, lot okay, yeah. Reagan, i didn't Reagan get over there because I'm, okay. I'm announced i'm doing the race and stuff yep and then they auctioned off a banner. Last year, they auctioned off the banner because we went from Dan Chuck to CPP. And the funny thing was Gary Brown and his wife, which, you know, the dog Elvis that you got to meet at Columbus. Um, she was bidding on last year's and he was down at the other and he's on the phone. Bid. They were bidding against each other and the banner sold for $5,000 last year. <laughs> so this year they had one. Chris is very smart because they're animal lovers. 
they had Tri Five Association members send in pictures of you and your dog, and they put it on this big banner. Well, it got left back in Indiana, and they had to give somebody to go by and bring it. Got it there that night just in time for the auction. We held it up, and there was this one guy. He was standing right up there. He was bidding on it because two of his dogs was on there. I felt kind of bad. I didn't want to say anything because it was almost like one of his dogs isn't with him anymore that was on the banner. He really wanted that. Well, then Gary Brown's wife, she came up and she got it for $3,000 for this banner because her dog's right in the middle. You know, Chris knows that they'll support the animal charity. So put Elvis, their little dog, right in the middle. And then she goes, we'll match what we paid last year. Awesome. So and then the 50-50 that night, we raised $10,000 with the drag race stuff for the local Humane Society. Oh, cool. So it was really, really pretty cool. That's awesome. Um, I still but that's can't get the, over the fact that drag race shows will race for no money. Yeah, and these guys, I mean, they're hardcore. I mean, there's, I'm up there watching all the reaction times, and I get nerdied out about bracket racing of reaction times and 30-foot times, and if you broke out or didn't break out, if you're on your number or a double O, whatever reaction time, I get really nerdy about. I love drag racing. and uh, But, yeah, they had a great turnout of race cars, and uh, it's only the second time we've done the Thursday night thing. Um, but we do feature cars. So the shake, rattle and run that I grew up seeing with Kevin Lawrence, Midwest drag racing legend drives the shake, rattle and run car. That the one has been the candy red one's been a race car since it's been brand new in 1957. So growing up, seeing him at Cordova and the world series and, you know, super Chevy shows that just they've seen the Messino family. It's just really cool. It's an honor to be on the mic, but, oh, speaking of drag racing, Jeff Lutz de I was waiting. debuted his new 57 Chevy, his new yellow one. As he did when he debuted the one a handful of years ago before. So the last two times I've been the, the official announcer for his first runs on the track. So it was pretty cool. And but that's he, when your dad said you finally made Yeah, it. that I interviewed <laughs> Jeff Lutz. So and Jeff is also he's got a dog running around his pits. So they're animal lovers. So they did this thing also for charity that night for the Humane Society. The local the the photo sports people that take your picture as you come in. They came and it started out for twenty bucks. You get your picture taken with Jeff Lutz. They print it off right then, hand it to, and then he signs it. Well, the first guy he raised it to a hundred bucks, so then it was a hundred bucks a person, and they sold. I don't know how many they did, That's 30, awesome. 30, 40. Well, then he donated a carbon fiber race worn helmet and signed it for the charity auction too. Um, I mean, I can't say enough things about Jeff Lutz or how he was with his fans at this Tri Five show, how welcoming, how out of his way that he went. You know, visit with people. They had their merch thing there. He obviously sold a lot of merch, but he's just a genuine dude. At this, he's a tri five guy. So it's it's incredible what it was. Just, I I told him I said, man, just thanks for what you do and it's being super rad. And he goes, well, these are my people. He said so, <laughs> and he's a drag racer, and you know they like the attention and all that stuff. But it was really pretty cool. My video that I put was his first real launch, and he did it at noon on Thursday. So he got there early to run, test and tune. Tuesday was the first time it did a burnout other than like in his driveway at the shop, broke the transmission. Mm. He was playing on testing for two days. Mm -hmm. Didn't bring a spare transmission. He goes, dude, it's been years since I broke a transmission. They got one from someplace. His shop, I believe is in Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. So he got a transmission anyway. And they're like, nope, we're not going to make the noon show. And they did. They got it done a half hour before I heard him over there warming it up. I ran over there. Yep, we're coming. So they made all their commitments. Yeah. Except they didn't run the last show on Saturday because they broke something else. Hmm. But they did stuff on Thursday night during the bracket thing at dark that they weren't scheduled to do just because, you know. So, very cool. So, yeah, Jeff Letts debuted his new 57. We run exhibitions. We do the Junior Stalkers, which we had, I don't know, 40 of them, which was a class that NHRA ran uh for tri fives back in the late fifties and in the early sixties, I think I'm a Barry Walmer. If he listens to this, he's going to be mad at me on what year they got rid of that class, but they're all small blocks, two sixty fives, two eighty threes. Most of a lot of them are stick shifts and they got stripes on the roof. And it's just, it's just cool. There's just cool. And, uh, Barry and his buddy, uh, Mr. Olson comes up and they, I just get to sit there and listen to them. They're like walking encyclopedias. They grew up around these cars. They, they own these cars, they've raced them, and just share the mics with them. And they're just great, great guys to be up there. And we do gasser class and uh, wheel standers, uh, Boyd Howe and Bellina that never knows which way he's going to go. Um, so, yeah, they put on a good, good show of drag racing. 
I think there were six, seven classes that finished on Saturday before the awards. So then going to the awards, allegedly, I'm part of the, the staff and the crew and a few builders and media people that help pick. You have to pull into a show area. Well, Thursday, the show area is past top 12, 25 winners. So they want those cars to keep coming back. And then they pick three, which I wasn't involved in, all-star award winners out of those past top 25 winners. So then, yeah, so for then Friday, to be eligible for a top 25, if you've never had one, you pull into the show car area, and there was 130, 140 cars in there. So we have to narrow it down to the top 25 cars. So are those, the ones that pull in there, are those the only ones that win awards, or is there No, that's where awards? the top 25 okay. comes out, but like, my best hot rod come from someplace else. Right. There's okay. a Matson Radiator Award. There's, um, you don't have to. Uh, name there's a there's a dozen yeah. other other pick awards that sponsors and okay. other builders and stuff get. They don't have to be in that area. Okay. And some people, I stopped to picture this really bitching mild custom '56 sedan with big tail lights and shaved and '58 uh, Impala roof fan on it. He comes over and he's like, Oh, you on the staff? Has he got any questions? He's thinking he's winning something. I was like, well, I actually picked the best hot rod. He goes, well, this isn't a hot rod. It's obviously a mild custom. I go, why aren't you in the top 25 area? Well, he'd never been to the show. And he goes, I didn't get invited. Oh. So some people still think, and I keep saying it on the microphone that you just pull in there. It's I don't like know pros if pick. You realize this or not, but a lot of people don't. They, a lot of people don't. But they, you would think if they're if receiver. they're out for trophies, they would. Yeah. But so what's cool about this? There's guys that they get there early and they get the spots out by the, the trees because it's mm -hmm. like air conditioning back there. They don't. Mm -hmm. They're just out there hanging with their buddies. They're hanging out and having sandwiches and stuff. And sandwiches. And the sandwiches. And uh, so you first come, first serve. Same with the pros pick at at Louisville or the builder's mm -hmm. choice at good guy shows, you just pull in there. You don't have to be invited or, you know, asked to be in. Same with, we talked about it, that Columbus street, right of the air street machine there. You just pull into the area. So he's like, okay, I'll remember that for next year. But okay. So we, we notify the people they get a top 25 sticker. Most people leave them on forever. It's a big deal out of almost 3000 cars. They get a top 25 and some incredible cars come, you know, past Riddler cars have been there. There was, a, a nomad that competed for the Sloniker. I mean, just incredible cars from home built to big shop built to debuted cars, older cars that's never been there that are incredible. I mean, it's just the variety. You cannot imagine the amount of variety that people will build three. I mean, I grew up on Tri-5, so I get it. 55, 6, and 7, how many ways that car can be built? How many color combinations? Motor swaps, chassis, wheels, tires. And I mean, it's, it's, it's just crazy what everybody thinks is the perfect Tri-5 in their mind. Um, so we, we notify them, the top 25, they line up at the end of our four o'clock show. So by four 30, and then after the racing is over on Friday night, we give them the awards. They pull up in front of the announcer's tower. They get out, they get their low car built sponsors and built these cool billet awards and they go down the drag strip. It's the top 25. So the next day, those top 25 park in an area, a different area. Because over in the grass area is ones that are like, uh, there's some more awards coming out of there to pull in. I forget what all those are. And I'm not involved over on that part. Um, but then some people don't believe, but that's what they do. All the top 25 get a piece of paper. Write your one, two, three, four, five. Number one being your favorite, two, three, four, five, because we pick a Lacara steering wheel top five out of the 25. It's purely peer voting. They add up the votes. And it was weird. That's why people don't believe us. They call bullshit because there was a truck, shop built truck, um, shop built, big shop, nomad in the five, a restored nomad that kind of like they had it painted, but him and his buddies put it together. One of these years, a restored car is going to win the car of the year. I'm just going to say that. How do you know it's all pure I, voting? I just think because there's some incredible re restored cars that come up. And if anyone could have won it, it was that no silver nomad this year it was absolutely incredible. Um, and there was a tube tube chassis pro street car with an LS and a Whipple charger poking out of the hood. And then uh, chassis swapped LS 57 sedan. There's just unbelievable color combination on it. So then we pull them up with the other, you know, best hot rod, all that. We do all that. And then we pull the five up and park them in front of the announcer's tower. And then I do interviews because we're filling time because 
they give, if you don't know, the Tri Fives each year, they build a car and give a car away at six o'clock on Saturday night, and that ends the show. So everybody's waiting. This year was a 57 sedan. Next year, it's a 55. They go 55. They keep rotating and doing it. So next year's a 55 again. If they do it, actually, you said they didn't know. No, they said the dates oh, are up. Okay. Yeah, they are. I doing, did see that yeah, the other yeah. day. Yeah. Dates are, and they've been advertising yep. on Facebook. Yes, they're coming so back coming for the 10th next 10th. year. Yep. And 55 is the giveaway. So the guys at Woody's Hot Rods, they build a car. Um, but anyway, I'll get to that. So we do the five and I do the interviews. We interview and then we fill the stretch it because we can't give the car away before six, mm -hmm. not a minute before, in case mm -hmm. somebody went to dinner and come back. It's advertised time. So then I do the interviews. I don't know who the winner is. The other guys around, like one of them know, and they're like, you want to know who's winning? No, I don't want to know <laughs> because then I might, without even trying, Favor do somebody. a different interview to somebody, you know? So I don't want to know who wins. And Pro Street's not dead. A Pro Street 57 hardtop, full tube chassis, wing, parachute, wheelie bars, wins the car of the year. And he's like, man, I'm interviewing him. He was a big muscular guy. And I asked him, I said, dude, you get stung by a bee? You're all puffy, you know, in front on the microphone. And he's talking about, yeah, my wife, she worked three full-time jobs to help me pay for this car. And she's hot too. And she's home taking the kids to football and all that. And but then he wins it, you know. Uh, I did that interview and then he wins it. He's, you know, very excited. And uh, so, yeah, it was just cool. And he goes, oh, yeah, being in the top 25 is really cool because I almost left early. <laughs> I get home and get to work. <laughs> and my buddies are like, come on, stay. You just never know. He's got a bunch of guys with really, you know, one of his other buddies got in the top 25, what I call street racer looking cars with like drag radials and stuff and beadlock wheels, like you know, bitch and hot rods. Uh, they go to Texas and I think they were at Columbus and he was very excited. And they're like, stay. It's We're down at six o'clock here on mm -hmm. Saturday. You got all day to get home. So he stayed and he won and he did the best big old burnout. <laughs> the drag strip guys at Beach Bend got the water and filled the water box and he lit that thing up, man. It was just as good as a Jeff Lutz burnout, man. It was uh, so a Pro Street full tube chassis car and usually a heavily modified car doesn't win the car of the year because there's so many people, different variety of cars and resto guys voting on this top five um, that like one year the Riddler car came, 57 hand-built car. It got in the top 25, but didn't get in the five. So you just never know what it's going to do. So I mean, it's not the car wasn't deserved. I was really surprised a full tube chassis looks like a super gas car sitting there won it. I mean, it was, it was really cool and it, the crowd went nuts. So yeah, they give away a car. Um, you got to be present. You got to be there to win it. And uh, Golden Star gives all the sheet metal. Sometimes they've had aftermarket chassis. Woody's now does a GM licensed aftermarket stock chassis. It has that with aftermarket suspension, TMI interior. Uh, Ed Rinky does, you know, LS motor. I mean, just cool car, shot wheels, just killer, killer car. And they give it away. A local guy, Bowling Green guy, actually wins it. And another cool thing that they do at this, this is, again, the swap meet is ridiculous and, and the vendors are ridiculous. But for the Children's Diabetes Association, Kirby runs the with Janet. Oh, so don't let me forget about Janet. I won't let you forget. I got two things I want to um, say about this because I know. Yeah. Yep. And uh, so each day they do a 50-50. So like Thursday during the day, because we do a separate one for the Humane Society Thursday night, the winner got like 1500 bucks on Thursday. They give that away. The next day on Friday, I keep wanting to say Saturday, Sunday, but Thursday, Friday, Saturday, it's very confusing. The... <laughs> Friday 50-50 winner won like $14,000. Wow. The Saturday winner got over $21,000 their take home. That's insane. So, yeah, so it's the 50-50 people get just as excited about that than winning the car. 21 grand to the winner in one day's worth of sale. Why didn't you win it? I did I bought tickets. I didn't spend much cuz I have medical Your bills for you is... and cat cat bills, but Turbo could have loved that money for cat vet right. bills. Um, but I did, I spent 10 bucks a day. I bought $5 and $5 the last two days. I space them out and I didn't win. Hmm. Um, but so, the thing that they do also during the Saturday night thing is they induct some people in the American tri five association hall of fame. So they do, I talked about the, uh, what was that called? The all-star three. Okay. So they get presented 
the next year they come back with their car, get a special parking area. They get so the people that got judged the All Star three, they'll get inducted in the Hall of Fame next year. So last year's top three did, and then the person that got the car of the year, the Finn Award, which is an unbelievable billet trophy, they get in the Hall of Fame. And there's usually one or two people that the American Chi Five Association picks. And they usually don't know. Like last year, it was the guy that retired from Dan Chuck. That was the marketing guy that always came to the shows. And usually there's tears and people cry. Well, this year, Chris gets out there and he starts talking. He says, my first year, he says, we're learning here. We weren't car show promoters. And he says, we didn't open the gates until like 8 o'clock in the morning. And the line, the traffic was backed up, which it can get that way uh -huh. <laughs> at Bowling Green for these events. But they swing the gates at like, shh. Don't give secrets. It's still dark when they open the gates. So that once, like Carrie says, once you get a line, you can't get rid of the line. So they didn't have a line the last few years. But this person said, you got to do something about this traffic. This is ridiculous. So Chris told them, well, why don't you help? Why don't you help? So they did. And we're thinking there, we're thinking it's Billy Wooten because Billy is involved in the Tri Fives, helps with the awards organization, which Bobby Alloway seen what he does. And Billy Wooten helps with the awards organization for the triple crown too. Uh, Billy's an old pro street guy known him, you know, buddies, of Rocky Robertson, which Billy just had heart, heart, heart stuff done. So he's back to doing stuff and out me and Matt Martinez. I said, is that Billy? Is that Billy getting it this year? You know, is Billy getting in the hall of fame, which very deserving. And then he starts talking about the city and stuff. And I go, Nope, it's Janet. So, you know, Janet, mm -hmm, very well, uh, you deal with her. Yep. Because she was, she's retired now, but she was, what it was her? The Visitor's Bureau? Visitor's Bureau. And help bring events. She is the the face and, had, and I don't know, she's retired, but she will always be the advocate for Bowling Green and automotive. She, she, yeah. she does, goes out of her way to do anything and everything she can for her city. She's always loved Bowling Green. She, she's their biggest cheerleader. She always had cookies. I always thought she made the cookies. She was no, the cookie she just girl. knows where to she buy them in town. Yeah, hey, I learned that know, just a couple years ago. But the way this lady is, she lives in Bowling Green, and they're hot rodders. They got Chevelles and Camaros, LS, beautiful cars. Well, when Carrie got hurt, she was in the hospital, and she was on Facebook. She goes, hey, I'm going to be needing a mobility cart. Anybody got one that I can borrow? Well, Bowling Green's not that far from where, luckily, we're in Nashville, hour. where your accident was in the hospital. Well, about an hour. And she messaged Carrie and says, oh, me and my husband was coming to dinner in Nashville tonight. So I'll bring the mobility cart that we have for it's his mom, right? I think it was her mom. Anyway, they, they bought, they bought her it her to mom, take yeah. her to the Ark, mm -hmm. uh, the Noah's Ark thing. And a little thing folds up, puts in the trunk. And so she comes down and brings it. And I meet her and put it in the trunk, Carrie's car. And she's like, so where's a good place to eat? She wasn't planning on coming to eat in Nashville. She, she told says, me that they did they had dinner. Yeah, but they did go to dinner, but they didn't have dinner. They didn't even know where they were going. They just no. brought the they mobility car for Carrie. Awesome. Carrie had it for a month at her events in Des Moines in Columbus, and it was light, a lifesaver for Carrie. And I took it back to them, well, that week on my way. On your way to Louisville. On my way, on my way, week before, on the way yeah. to Louisville, I took it back to them. So I went to their house and seen their hot rods. I mean, I've seen them at shows and LS Fest and stuff before. So uh, it was great. Janet Henderson in the American Tri Five Association Hall of Fame. She did not know. Her husband did because Janet may not stay, but she usually stays to see who wins the 50 50 in the car because she lives in Bowling Green. So, so it was very cool. It was like perfect choice awesome. uh, for the, the, the surprise pick that Chris always does one or two. So, so but, yeah. So there was a sad thing that happened with the Tri Five this year. Remember what that sad thing is? What was the sad thing? Well, actually, there was two sad things. So one, your dad couldn't come. Yeah. So your dad My dad was... recently had a pacemaker the weekend I was in, in Kansas. He had a pacemaker. Yep. Been but waiting on a knee. He wasn't going to be. He already canceled his trip to come because he was his by having trouble with his knee. Mm -hmm. So um, he wasn't going to be able to come and then had some other health issues. You know, doing good now. And but... My dad's been to every Tri-5 except maybe one. He missed yeah. one one time. Um, so he wasn't there. But the car mm. that Tim had found that was his dad's car was supposed to be there and it, it wasn't. wasn't. My, like my dad, Darn it. Uh, 
somebody I seen my dad's old yellow and white 55 that he got rid of in 1985, right? 1985. That's like, as Lily would say, that's from the 1900s. Yeah. Uh, my dad bought a farm saying. back then, didn't have money to buy farm equipment, traded it to Dan Dexter outside of Galesburg, Illinois, for a used tractor, a used planter, a used plow, a used Whirly Gig more. Um, yeah, in 1985. Tilt front end, tunnel ram car. Yeah. Well, or it was 80, it might have been 86. I was 14 or 15, so it was 85 or 86. So me and dad have a little, but I never got to drive the car because I had too much horsepower. I got to learn to drive in the Corvette that he had, the stick shift. So I was just always, man, I want to drive this car someday. So I seen it like in a car show page on Facebook. This is the good thing of the internet. So I was like, man, anybody know this? We're looking for this car. Like in a week, like 750 people had shared it. If you look at the logistics, it went in front of like a million pages. And people started sending me a message. Oh, the, here's the guy. And oh, I don't know his number. Oh, he's a truck driver. And oh, him and his dad have hot rods. His dad, they're super cool. Once you get him on the phone, you're not going to stop talking to They're just super cool people. Well, finally, we get the number. I give it to my dad. My dad calls him, talks to him. So last fall, my dad drives. It's in Wisconsin. Um, again, he painted it. We did have concrete in the garage, but just barely. Centauri acrylic enamel paint. Al Hall from Galesburg, pinstripe flames, all that's still on it. They changed the wheels to aluminum slots, changed the exhaust, and it's got a blower motor in it. But it's still got, other than the carpet, it's got the interior that Gene Nally, that has passed away back home, Galesburg area, McCom uh, Monmouth, McCom Alexis. His Alexis. shop was in Alexis. And he, he taught upholstery at the college mm -hmm. in Galesburg. He did the seats. Mom and dad put the carpet in. It's had new carpet in because it had mice get in it and stuff. But it's the same car. I mean, the pinstriping still on, all that stuff. But even crazier, as your dad goes up to see the car driving his brand new truck. With less than 2,000 miles on it. That he just it. got, like, his first special order special farm truck. Order, yeah, color, everything, truck, yeah. Gets hit in the parking lot at the gas station going up to see this. So it's, like, all this yeah. stuff. Well, the, the story was my dad, he pulled in this gas station, and he said, some old guy run into me. My dad's <laughs> 76 years old. Okay. Well, then when I talked to my sister and she's like, it wasn't really like that. <laughs> they both ran into each other and the cop showed up and didn't give anybody a ticket because I guess it's like the sun was Aww. out and it's like, it's like a weird little gas station. You know, this isn't the first time somebody's ran into somebody in this gas station, the way the curbs are. So they're both at fault because they were both moving. But my dad says some old guy ran into yep. him, but two older gentlemen ran into each other at a gas station and my dad had to have a fender fixed and all yes. that stuff. But he goes that up and looks at it. Way up to look at that. Yeah. I had a great yeah. time. I couldn't go with him. He drove up to Wisconsin last fall and seen it. And they're supposed to be going to bring it to the tri five. They want to enjoy the car for a year or so after they put this new motor in it. But supposedly this fall or next spring, they're going to give my dad first chance to buy his. So I'm wondering, they put back. a new motor in it. I'm wondering if they didn't get it running. No, he, oh. he heard it run. Oh, okay. And I have videos that they sent me online of it. Oh, blow, gotcha. I mean, it's got a wicked small block, but a blower motor. But yeah, it was running. But, you know, life gets in the way. And come so are you 100% sure it was not there? I looked everywhere. I had Tommy Lee Bird, photographer. I asked Chris. I asked Alex Scarborough, that's the young kid that's the photographer. Nobody's seen it there. Okay. There was five yellow and white cars there that I seen. <laughs> Um, cause I'd see them and I'd take off with the, many? none of them is like, Oh, that don't have a tilt front end. Nope. There's no motor through the hood. So there was some yellow and white 55s there, but none of them had pinstripe flames. None of them had a blower motor and a tilt front end. There was a couple okay. cars with tilt front ends cut the same way, but they weren't yellow and white. And, uh, I tried calling the people, um, or texting the people. And I guess it's a landline. I guess some people still have landlines. And, uh, so again, I, I, it's, uh, it's, it's Bowling, Bowling Green. Green. Bowling Stone yeah. Work. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. So yeah, that was good that and was sad. So I was hoping yeah. to see. Dan was really looking it. forward to, to getting he some was pictures. Home. I sent him pictures that. and I sent him videos of the Jeff Lutz car yep. leaving the track. So uh, so yeah, that's uh, we had a good response from the last time we talked about events because nobody does it. You know, there's 30 shows that talk about NASCAR racing and yeah, well, there's really not. They don't do NHRA today anymore where they talk about last week's NHRA. But fo there's a million football and basketball things. So. People really liked that we talked about the Des Moines and Columbus, and uh, so we thought we'd do this a little late, but I think it's going to go up yeah, tomorrow, maybe. Um, I don't know. No, today's Monday. We go well, live on Wednesday, so it'll go live this Wednesday. Well, they don't know it what will the be day two is. days ago. <laughs> so we've got some more. Yeah. Uh, had some great interviews that we have recorded in the box. 
Yeah, and I'm trying not, to get some ahead of the game just because we're getting ready to get into a busy I don't want to curse it, but we have one scheduled for tomorrow Shh, night. I'm not going to say it. I hope it works. He was one of the first five that we wrote down on the list that, man, I want to get this person. He never does interviews like that. We've been very lucky on getting people like that. Yeah. Um, but we get him tomorrow night. It won't be for three or four weeks. Three or four weeks. Before it comes yeah. out. We have got in the box. We've got once we get them. No, once we get them recorded, then we'll post it out on social media. So we've got the two recorded that are ready to go. Which we so, say who they are. Yeah, you can they say Josh it. Mishler. Yep, photographer for many magazines. Worked for Advanced Plating. Now he works at Vintage Fabrication. That they just won Street Route of the Year. Uh, I've known Josh since before he had his driver's license. He worked for good guys for years. So great story, Josh. Good friend. And then another great one. Uh, we have. Corey and Ashley Talbert coming up. Our first couple interview that we did. Yep. That was and it was great. Talked some about cats because they're cat people. We did. Um, it was very cool. And neither one of our cats made a presence. I don't know if you can see behind me, but Axel's been playing back there most of the time. Yeah. Never seen either one of our yeah. cats the entire time we were talking to him. Axel made a lot of Ashley appearance the night we did Jim Cozy. Yeah. He really liked Jim's yeah. voice for some reason. But yeah. We both have a <laughs> super, super busy September. Well, I actually, I have a super busy September. I do, but I'm not you as busy do, as you. You do, but you don't. Yeah. Um, thankfully, the one is local. Um, and then... Yeah, I have, have tri triple crown and so, yeah, Texas you've got good a, guys. You've got and... some home time, but... We might, I've got a super busy month. We might go hang out at the BMX race in Louisville for a day or two just to see everybody. We're not, either one of us, she's not ready to race yet. I'm not, haven't been on my bike since she's been crashed. So, but we miss our BMX people. So we might go up and hang out and see some racing. It's because I want to do a podcast. I want to record a podcast. Yeah, we're trying to get, we were, we've uh, pretty much given up on the first BMX person that we wanted to do. He doesn't really want to do it. Uh, I still think we'll get him someday. But we're not going to wait. We're going to try to continue on and stick a couple, huh? Move the table. A couple BMX people, uh, BMX Olympians. We're going to try to get. Yeah. So uh, and of course, one day. Um, so Lily and Nick were here um, before they went back to school, and which Lily have, is our BMX girl. We've sponsored since she's a little kid. We make fun of Lily sometimes because she's yes. the one that says we were from the 1900s. Well, you were at Louisville, and I was talking to her about Louisville because she was here getting ready to go to school. And I was trying to remind her of the, the show Louisville because we did our Hot Red Industry mm. BMX challenge, and she had a frame given to her at the at the event. Me and Danny being, Taylor was talking about Danny Taylor, yep. the custom painter, was hanging out with me in the announcer tower at Tri Fives, and his I wife. I think she Debbie. was like seven or eight. Yeah, now she's twenty. But they were here, and we have a tendency to leave the microphone up in this room because I don't have to put it up all the time. And they were sitting in here. I don't even know what they were doing, but they were acting like they were doing a podcast. Because really? they listen and to then, them. They're not car they people do. at all, but they and listen. And then they're like feeling offended that we've never wanted to interview them. So we were going to do a sit down and do the four of us with them before they went off to college. And then, Which your boyfriend's from Norway. They met at Cycling College. And yeah. But then some drama happened that night. I don't remember what it was. And I was crabby and it didn't work. So hmm. but we'll definitely. You I get know. crabby? We'll definitely sit down with Lily and Nick sometime. I think that would be fun because mm -hmm. um, we can make fun of the way Nick talks. Yeah, he's Norwegian. He's Norwegian. So, okay. That nah. was another uh, nah. little longer than what we were thinking. Strange Motion Way podcast with me, yep. Tim Strange, and Carrie Strange. So, uh, we'll see you at the next one. Thanks for tuning in. The Strange Motion Way podcast. Brought to you by Royal Purple Synthetic Oils. Royal Purple Premium Synthetic Motor Oils and High Performance Chemicals have been designed to improve performance in all conditions and provide cleaner operation, better mileage, and decreased oil change frequency. That means less oil changes. With products available for your gasoline and diesel engines, Royal Purple is the obvious choice for your performance needs. Drive with Royal Purple, the synthetic expert.